the great classical violin makers were known for the grace and beauty of the scrolls with which they adorned their instruments. We'd like to talk about how a scroll is carved so that the grace is built into it and not just slowly ground until it looks better, which is a way that it can be done, but there's a better way. The better way is to start with a paper pattern. Know where you're going and then start cutting the wood with a template. Example, this is an unfinished cello scroll. Essentially, the turns are there. A little more work is necessary to finish it. How did we get this far? Well, we used a template like this. And the way the template is done, you set it on the wood that you're going to cut, and you scribe around it so you've got a starting point with lines that you can follow with the tools in which you cut the wood. How did we arrive at this? This is the trick. The secret of the classical scroll, particularly those of Stradivari, is that there's more to it than mere beautiful curves. There is a deeper meaning in which the scroll actually imitates the violin body in its proportions. This was something which the classics did consistently and the moderns haven't really considered as consistently. So let's see what we would do to make this happen. We've got the side figured out. Let's look at the spine, the back of the scroll. How do we get there? Then we can talk about little details. This is what makes the difference. We generate a paper pattern. This would be the back end of the scroll here. This would be the front end here. And the way that is used, once the pattern is set and we know what widths we want to follow, we take our pattern and apply it to the body of the scroll that we're carving. And if we do a better job than that, you'll be pleased if we need to. There we go. Like this. So, we like with the other template, we scribe along the outside, and then we have a starting point. The other thing we have is a set of specific distances with specific widths that we want to put into the scroll. So we start with a center line, a fine scribed line, that allows us to measure with a compass back and forth as we cut. Once this part is done, we finish the sides, hollow out the middle, and we're ready to complete the scroll. Now, the secret of the scroll. The classical scroll has embedded in it numbers that reflect those of the cello that it's going to fit. Let's look at that. The first part, which we could call the eye of the scroll or the ear of the scroll, is when finished 14 millimeters in width. The F hole of the body, the upper eye, the upper hole of the F is exactly 14 millimeters. So this copies that. This gives you a clue as to what the dimensions are going to be that you also create in the body itself. Let's look a little further. Next step is to work out the relationship of the turns to the center. And these are millimeter values. At 40 millimeters, you can go from the top here to the center, and you can go this way, 40. Here, you can go down 30 to this point, and from the center west, 30. So we have two numbers, 30 and 40, that's three quarters, that's 75. There's some number going on here that's not 
coincidental, it's deliberate. Where does this go? The wider values, this is 66 and a half millimeters on this scroll, and it creates a cross right at the, the ear of the scroll. The total width is 89 millimeters. None of this is random. In Strat, and this is a Stradivarian scroll that I am copying, it actually was from the Dupour Stradivari, which Rostropovich owned during his lifetime, and he was kind enough to allow me to study it, to photograph it, and to take uh, measurements of that cello. It's considered perhaps the finest in the world, the most desirable. So if we look here, the front of the scroll has this, of course, as its center, which is this value. The, the chin down below goes to this width, it, it narrows, and then it narrows up across to the top. Same sets of numbers we can look at, and look at what happens. This little bit is 11 millimeters, this across here is 18, the total is 20 for the top. 11 divided by 20 is 0.55. That is the fraction 5 over 9. And this is one of the values that very frequently sets the F holes in the body, that proportion. 18 to 20 is 9 tenths. And as we go down, almost every comparison produces a reasonable, rational fraction. And that's very important because they worked in the Renaissance with whole number fractions, ratios. This was derived from Pythagoras, the ancient Greek philosopher, who first determined that musical intervals were related to each other in terms of whole number fractions. Here you see this concept being applied to the creation of an artistic feature which has always been appreciated for its beauty, here's one of the reasons it is beautiful, because it is rational. And also, the whole thing has been calculated. Nothing is random. So when they finish, the work is absolutely gorgeous. This is an example of how it turns out, finished and varnished. This is my copy of Rostropovich by uh, Cello. Hope this has been interesting to you. Look forward to seeing you in the workshop sometime soon. Come visit. Thank you.